Harry Kane is uh, fighting in all fronts in uh, Germany, Simon. I watched a bit of it last night. I dipped in and out of that, and our friend uh, Nasser Al-Khalafi's PSG yep. up against Real Sociedad. But you look at it now, Bayern Munich, they lost, for the record, they lost last night in the first leg of their tie in the Champions League against Lazio, one goal to nil. They're out the German Cup, five points behind in the league. Yep. Uh, one nil down in the Champions League. Uh, we were talking behind the scenes, Simon, looking a bit at social media this morning. Many people hoping that Harry Kane fails. Um, many people, and, and I, I don't think they're Tottenham fans who were sore that uh, he, he left them to head out to the Bundesliga. But there wasn't a lot of love around for Harry this morning. Um, do, do you think that Harry is going to... He's going to experience a season in his first season at Bayern Munich, the like of which he did not expect. Um, possibly, because he's going to a side that's won the Bundesliga 11 years in a row. And if he lands in the season that they don't win the Bundesliga, he's going to be, in certain people's minds, characterised as a pariah. Yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is we were reporting him three or four weeks ago as absolutely smashing it. And I know that his goal tallies have dropped off in recent weeks and recent games, but he's still getting one in two, which was the blueprint for suggesting a striker is an elite striker. And he's still got 22 goals this season. So he's still in a situation where his contribution is unarguable. Yeah. It's just the side is going through a transition. I mean, they had this slight blip with Pep Guardiola all those years ago. And quite frankly, if I'm a German fan, I'd be quite happy to see someone else win the Bundesliga rather of than course. Bayern Munich yeah, every yeah. single season. But for Harry Kane... It's disappointing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he is achieving what he would have um, wanted to achieve, which is playing in the Champions League. They, OK, they've lost 1-0 away to Lazio. Big deal. The second leg uh, is back at the Allianz. Yeah. I suspect they'll take care of business, irrespective of whether they've been outplayed by the best side in the German Bundesliga at this moment in time, Leverkusen, that are playing with a great deal of pomp. Yeah. They're still there and thereabouts. So, Having said that, it's the first time Bayern have lost the first leg of a, a, a round of 16 fixture in 11 seasons. Yeah, OK. Well, that You're is right, though. It's still open. That, that is what it is. I mean, yeah. it would be meaning, more meaningful if they were getting beaten 3 or 4 nil. It's 1 nil, so they're 1 nil down at half-time. Uh, sure. And so with that in mind, I would imagine that Bayern Munich will overcome Lazio um, and then the conversation will move on to who's going to knock them out of the Champions League because they don't look like a Champions League winning side. The only side that looks like is going to win the Champions League to me is either Real Madrid continue to get the rub of the green they've gotten for the last couple of years yeah. or Man City do what I expect them to do, which is dominate Europe as they've dominated the Premier League. The thing about Harry, though, Simon, is, and this won't be lost on Gareth Southgate watching from distance at the moment, yeah. um, he had so many shots last night but couldn't even put them on target. And his form, sure, Harry will always get goals, but at the moment, the goal touch has deserted him. He, he spoke post-match. The main thing for me and, and the team is that we have to, you know, focus on the next, the next challenge. We're in a difficult spell. There's no hiding that. But uh, we have to fight and we have to turn it around. Yeah, and confidence is a difficult thing, isn't it? Easily lost, not so easily got back. No, for sure. But uh, like I touched on there, the good thing is that we have big games. We have big things to fight for still. So we're not out of it. We will never give up. And um, yeah, we just need to turn it around. You know, one game or one spark can, can change a lot in football. And, and we need to try and find that. So we'll push together. You know, we'll uh, push each other in training and in the game on the weekend and, and try and find it. So he's none the worse. Yeah, was that a question or a statement from, uh, from the from the, from the, from the uh, interviewer? Confidence <laughs> is easily lost. I mean, these players have got lots to say for themselves. Yeah. And they're all big men. The confidence shouldn't be easily lost. They're big players. They should get themselves back on the horse. Yeah, of course. They had 17 shots mm. against Lazio and none on target. Well, that's just poor, isn't it? I mean, we, but we've seen that from other sides in the Premier League this season. We've seen some sides that have been prolific in creating chances yeah. and not scoring goals. Chelsea have been the case in point. Harry Kane will score goals. Harry Kane will probably finish the Bundesliga top scorer. Um, it'll be interesting to see because the noise being made a couple of weeks ago is he was going to eclipse Lewandowski. That's subsided a little bit. But the side is not clicking. And and, and, and and Harry Kane is very much dependent upon how many chances are created around him. Yes, he's had a lot of chances yesterday and he didn't hit one of them on target. I guarantee you Harry Kane will score goals wherever he plays. You would like to think so. There's a bit of pressure on him. Is there more pressure on Thomas Tuchel, Tuchel. Uh, our one-time friend at Tuchel. Chelsea? Tuchel. I mean, when you look at it, Tuchel's lost 10 of his 43 games in charge there. Almost as many defeats as Nagelsmann suffered in 84 games in charge. Sure. Sure, I understand that. And uh, ultimately, the expectations of Thomas Tuchel are far greater yeah. because of his track record and the perception of him being an elite manager. And in fact, he is. He's one of the top managers around. Um, whether some of his antics in other spaces are to be admired, that's a different discussion. But it cannot be debated that he will be the person. If Harry Kane scores 30-odd goals this season and they finish second in the Bundesliga and win nothing, he won't be considered a failure. He'll be considered part of a team that failed, whereas the manager will take the responsibility for a failing team. 
So I think the, the characterization of the conversation who's under greater pressure, well, Harry Kane will be under his own pressure because he's made a move to Bayern Munich. The real reason behind that move was Tottenham had one season to go. He wasn't going to sign a new contract and they got offered silly money. Yeah. And so Daniel took it. Mm. And Bayern Munich were the only people prepared to pay that silly money in terms of uh, £90 million or whatever it was for a player that's got one year left on his contract that's coming to a stage in his career when one might consider big transfer fees and not available for clubs. So the move was really engineered by economics. Harry would have expected, I anticipate, to have gone over there and uh, and won something. And he may yet do, but the point is is that I, I, I alluded to last year when I was thinking about him going to Germany, I didn't see why he'd want to go to Germany. I didn't see why why Germany would be a place for him to go to and people were talking about winning things and fine, if an Englishman thinks winning the Bundesliga is meaningful, then okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, there's an irony of that comment because he's gone over to Germany and I didn't think he would and there's a distinct possibility he'll come away from his first season with nothing. And the irony will be there for all to see. It sure will. It sure will. They can turn it around against Lazio. Of course they can. Simon, at last, though, we've got a, a, a bit of a league title chase on involving the two big ones in Glasgow, yeah. Rangers and Celtic. Yeah. Rangers, 3-1 winners over Ross County last night. Celtic stay top uh, on goal difference, 61 points. Rangers on 61 points. Um, uh, if they'd uh, converted more of their 23 efforts on target, the goal difference, uh, yeah. they would have gone top yeah. of the table, Rangers. But at last, at last, a bit of a nip and tuck title race. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, we've had Rangers back in the fold and Stephen Gerrard delivered them a, a Scottish Premier League uh, two or three seasons ago. But in recent times, it's not been great fair. Obviously, they've done well in Europe. Yeah. They still got to answer the conundrum of being able to overcome Celtic. Um, and in the last game, they didn't. They've got, when they're playing Celtic, they're playing Celtic at, um, at uh, Ibrox on the 6th of April. Right. This will, be, this, will, this will be the acid test. If they go pound for pound and both, get, both win their games, the game on the 6th of April will be a fascinating one because that will take Rangers, if they match what Celtic do, above them and, and above them on three points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. that's the one. And, and, that, and it's at Rangers. And I like this Philippe Clement. I liked him the moment he walked through the door. Mm. Irrespective of Souness now trying to alight upon him like some demented cuckoo, he wanted Frank Lampard. <laughs> now he's got <laughs> Philippe Clement and now he's taking some credit for it. The point is, is that I liked him the moment, the moment you, you can see it with people. The moment he sat in that press conference, I thought, oh, there's a distinct possibility they've got a live one here. Yeah. Because there wasn't any bells and whistles on him. There was just a forthrightness about him, which was basically, I am here to do a job and I'm going to do that job. And that's the takeaway that I took from listening to his first press sure. conference. I remember you turned to me and you said, <coughs> I like the sounds of this character. And here we are, with and a team that's doing well. Yeah. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.